Welcome back. This is lesson 10 of Machine Learning Zoom Camp session 3. And uh, in this lesson, we will talk about training logistic regression with scikit-learn. So in the previous uh, lesson, we talked about, uh, we'll, we talked already about the logistic regression and we compared it with linear regression and we saw that the difference between them, so they are quite similar, the difference between them that at the end for logistic regression, we convert the score that we get into a number between um, zero and one. But otherwise, they are pretty similar. So they have uh, um, logistic regression also has bias and uh, the weights factor. So in this uh, lesson, we will see how to actually uh, get these parameters, how to learn these parameters. And for that, we will use library. So we will not implement this ourselves in this lesson. So for that, so from um, scikit-learn, Logistic regression lives in the linear models package so because as we discussed, it's a linear model. Uh, and by the way, so we have linear regression here or a rich regression, which is a, uh, so this rich, which is a regularized linear regression. So what we need is actually a logistic regression. So we import that. And now we just create uh, this model, logistic regression. And for training the model, we use the fit method. So we just use fit, and we already have our X train that we created in a few. Yeah, so here in lesson eight, so we already have the X, the feature matrix for train and validation data set. So now let's use them. So we have X train and we have Y train. Let's train a model. So now it. Uh, it's quite fast and we can uh, look at what's inside. So we are interested in uh, COEF. So these are the, the weights, the, the W. Um, so we, you see it's actually a two dimensional array with just one row. So if we just want to get the W, yeah, yeah so that's it. So maybe if I round it, it looks nicer, I don't know. Yeah, so this, uh, these are the, the weights. Um, also we have, uh, um, bias is called intercept. So the bias and intercept are synonyms. Again, it's uh, an array. So we're interested in only in one uh, in the first element of this array. So it's here. Yeah, so these are the coefficients. So um, do you actually use the model? Um, so we can use the function. So first we can use the function called predict. And we, if we use it, let's use it first on uh, our train data set. We see that it predicts already numbers. So it predicts zero and ones. So in this case, zero is not churn, one is churn. So what we are interested in are not uh, predictions. Uh, so these are, I would call hard predictions. Um, so they are called hard predictions because they we already have the exact label. So this is, uh, this is churn, this is churn. And these are also true. So this is uh, like, we don't know the certainty, certainty of these uh, predictions. We don't know. So we don't know the probability for that. And to actually learn the probability, we use uh, the function called uh, predict proba, which stands for predict probability. So these are soft predictions. By soft, we, we mean here that uh, it's not uh, just a number zero or one, but a score. So let's actually first make sense from uh, what it means. So why there are two columns. So let me clear it a bit. So why there are two columns here. So this is a two-dimensional matrix with uh, uh, two columns. So, so in the first one, so this is the probability of uh, being uh, negative, uh, negative class. And this one is the probability of belonging to positive class. So actually this, uh, this part here, this is what we are interested in. So this is uh, the probability of uh, churning. And uh, so for example, for this person, uh, we know that uh, the, the probability of churning is 50%, right? And pr uh, the probability of non-churning, so this is the opposite, is uh, 46%, right? So we are only interested in uh, this. So we don't really need, need that part. So what we can do now, is we can just take uh, the first column of these predictions. And this would be soft predictions, right? Because it's not like a hard decision. We now can use this to decide uh, above each uh, threshold, we treat people as churning. 
so it's up to us to to make the final decision and uh, yeah actually let's uh, do the same for validation so let's not use train so we use validation data set and we see that uh, yeah we get this uh, get this array with predictions and now we can make this uh, so-called hard decision right so we can decide that for people above a certain threshold and for us it can be 0 0.5 and i think the, the the default threshold here when we do predict is 0 0.5 so this is what the model is used uh, by default so if we do that we get a binary array with predictions so false here means uh, we think that the, this user this customer is not churning and true means that we think that this customer is churning so yeah so this let's call it uh, uh, churn decision and this is the the, the decisions that we can use uh, so remember that we talked about sending promotional emails so for these people and uh, yeah, let's uh, look at this uh, data frame that we have data frame validation uh, so this way we can select uh, all the customers that we think are going to churn and for example get the customer id so these are the people, these are the people that will receive a promotional email uh, with some discount, right? Our model thinks that they will churn, so let's send them some uh, discount. Okay, and uh, yeah, and if you remember how it works, so the, it selects um, all the rows for which this one uh, is uh, true. Okay, so we have this and uh, let's actually Let's see how accurate our predictions are. Uh, remember for uh, regression, we used RMSE as a way to measure the performance of our model you know, to see how good it is. So here we can use something similar, it's called accuracy, which tells us how many correct predictions we made. So, and this is um, fairly easy to implement. So first uh, we have uh, our uh, Y validation, right? And we have our churn decisions. So let's make uh, them integers as well. And we can just see how many of them match. So we already see uh, these two match and uh, these three match, right? So we're interested how many, in total, how many of them are actually matching. And for that, what we can do is we can just uh, use this equals equals uh, operator, which will return true if numbers match and false if they don't. Then we just use mean to see how many of them actually match. So we see that 80% of our predictions match. So uh, this may be, uh, let's, uh, let's take a look at how this, uh, what is actually happening inside. I think this could be a difficult line to understand. So first of all, so let's create a data frame just to um, see what's happening inside. So data frame with, uh, I don't know, data frame predictions. So in this data frame, what we'll have, uh, uh, let's say, uh, probability. So this is our uh, soft predictions. So this is uh, the probability that this particular customer is going to churn. Then let's uh, also write here my prediction. So this is our churn decision. Now let's turn it into integer. And let's write the actual value here. So actual, it's our uh, I well, Y validation. So, and this is how our data frame looks like. So here we have the probability for each uh, customer, we have the predictions and we have the actual value. And now we can see for each of them, we can see how many of them are correct. So we see that this one is correct. This one is correct. Yeah, these two uh, are correct. So I, th I think all of them that we see here um yeah so this one isn't correct so this one is wrong yeah so let's see how many of them are correct but, uh, for that we just uh, do this data frame uh, prediction uh, equals equals data frame actual and let's see again let's take a look at this data frame yeah so we have another column that says correct and for each each time it matches it, each time it's the same it's uh, true and when it's not correct 
uh, and actually for this person we thought that probability is super tiny it's like three four percent but this person still left so this we got uh, um, we didn't get right in this one and then now we what we need to see is uh, what's the fraction of correct ones here and uh, we can do this uh, correct mean and uh, remember um, here this is basically so this, since this is a binary array what happens inside is when we do mean is just it calculates the fractions of ones there and uh, since it's uh, it's a boolean array not a one zero so this true turns into uh, one and false turns into uh, zero uh, so this happens um, like we don't need to explicitly say ask it to convert like we did here like um, actually the same happens when we explicitly convert but we, if we don't explicitly convert the conversion happens automatically so we don't need to worry about that and uh, when we write this so this is like a shortcut for doing everything that we we did here so this one produces uh, a boolean array right and then when we do mean it just shows the fraction of uh, uh, of truths uh, of ones in this array so we see that our model is actually 80 percent correct which means that in 80 percent of the cases when the model says a person is going to churn or not going to churn, this is actually true. So the model is correct in these cases and for the remaining 20%, the model is saying that, okay, this person is not going to churn, but they are, or it says the model is, um, the person is going to churn, but they are not going to churn. Okay, and uh, this model has, um, like we saw the coefficients. So we saw the bias term or intercept. We saw the weights. Um, or what we call W, the vector W. So let's uh, try to make sense what uh, this actually means. So this is what we will do in our next video, in our next lesson. We will try to look at the coefficients and understand what they mean.